Well, hello everybody. You're watching Code Zonk on YouTube. This is the channel that's dedicated to teaching kids how to code. And today we're going to start that effort by actually trying out an app. I'm going to show you first how to get the app. It's called Daisy the Dinosaur. And here's how I got it. And now if you've uh, got uh, moms and dads who are controlling your iPad, this is an iPad app, so you may need to ask mom and dad for help. But this is how I did it. I went up to the search uh, up here in the top corner, and I did a search for Daisy. And what it is, is it's actually called Daisy the Dinosaur, and it comes up here in the search result. And you just go ahead and select that. Now I've already downloaded the app, but here where it says open, you'll see something else like get. It's a free app, you don't have to pay for it, but you may need mom or dad or your teacher's help to put in a password to make sure that you can download it, so make sure you get some help there. That's what you're going to want to do to make sure that you've got Daisy the Dinosaur on your iPad. And then we'll play it. Let me go ahead and bring up the app and it's going to come up in a different orientation here. So you may have to flip your iPad over to the side. There's a couple of things that you can do. You can do free play mode or you can do challenge mode. And what we're going to focus on today is challenge mode. And now what this app is going to do is it's going to show you how to control Daisy the Dinosaur. And some of these controls are actually very similar to the types of concepts that you would encounter when you're writing your own software or you're doing your own code or maybe writing an app. And it'll make a lot more sense when we go ahead and take a look at it. So let's do that now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch challenge mode. And that brings us right up. So the first step, according to what we see over here in the top right of the screen, is it says, hello and welcome. We're going to try figuring out how to move Daisy so that she can stop in the center of the star. Now over here, over here on the left, we've only got one command available to us. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the one command that we have, which is move, and we're going to slide it into the center here where it says program. It's really easy. And you're not going to see my finger on your screen, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your finger on the move command and then just slide that over to the program. And when you see that yellow spot, just go ahead and let go and it'll snap right into place. Now in this case, we want to move forward. But if you put your finger on that little arrow down where it says forward, you'll see that you can change it from forward to backward. But we're going to leave it at forward. Because you can see Daisy is standing in front of the star. We want Daisy to move forward to touch the star. So we're just going to leave that one move forward command in the program and then we're going to come over here and we're going to press play. Let's see what it does. That was perfect. It says we've completed the challenge and so far we're an amazing coder. We're going to go ahead we're going to try the next challenge. So if you're following with me press the try the next challenge button with your finger and we'll move on. This time over here in the command section, we have two commands. We have move and we have jump. In the instructions here on the right, it says reach for the clouds. Now the circle is a little higher. Use the jump method to reach it. So we've got two commands. We have move, which we've used, and we have a new one called jump. So what we're going to do is we've got Daisy standing right here. Daisy needs to first move over here, then Daisy needs to jump up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the move command, we're going to put our finger on it, we're going to slide it over to the program. It's yellow. We'll just let it go. It snaps into place. Now, after Daisy moves, we want Daisy to jump. So we're going to go ahead and put our finger on the jump command, and we're going to slide that over to the program. And when we see that yellow spot, we'll let it go, and it'll snap into place. So now we've got two commands in our program. We have move in the direction of forward, and then we have jump. I think that's going to work. Let's go ahead and press play and give it a shot. Now she's moving, and then she jumped. Looks like we did it. So we've completed this challenge, and so far we're still amazing coders. We're going to press the green button, and we're going to move on to the next challenge. This time over here, we've got three commands available to us. We're going to look at the instructions here on the right. It says make Daisy spin five times. Well, we've got three commands. We've got move, jump, and spin. But according to the directions, 
All we need to do is make Daisy spin five times. I think what we're going to want to do is put our finger on spin and move spin into the program. We've got one spin now. According to the instructions over here, we need to make Daisy spin five times. So what I'm going to do is put spin in here four more times. I'm going to put my finger on spin drag it into the program until I see the yellow spot and then let it go. It snaps into place. I'll do it two more times. And one more time. And now if you count, we've got one, two, three, four, five spins in the program. So if the instructions say to make Daisy fin spin five times, if I press play like I do now, I think we're going to be good. Let's try it. There's three, four, and five. You know what? We did it. So we've completed the challenge. We still qualify as amazing coders. Let's go ahead and try the next challenge. Follow along with me. This time, according to the instructions over here, we're going to try to make Daisy spin five times while only using the spin method once. Now that's interesting because we had to put spin in there five times before. This time, they only want to see spin in there one time. How are we going to do that? Well, it gives us a hint. It says, Put the spin inside the repeat 5. So if we look over at our commands, we see that we now have a repeat 5 command. It's a different color. That suggests that it probably has some sort of different functionality. Let's go ahead and drag that into our program and have a look. I'll let it go. It snaps into place. And this time, what it does is it gives us this little highlighted area. It looks like a little cloud. Now, according to the instructions, it says put the spin inside the repeat, in the, inside the repeat five. So, I think based on what the instructions are telling us, they want us to take the spin and slide it over here into the cloud that is connected to the repeat five command. Now, repeat five, what that suggests to us is it's going to do whatever you put in that little cloud five times. So let's go ahead and see if that's what it's going to do. We're going to press play and, and we're going to have a look at Daisy and she's going to spin five times. It looks like we did it. We've completed that challenge. We're still amazing coders, but we've got another challenge. Let's go ahead and give it a try. This time it says control Daisy yourself. Here is something new. It's called when. If you put a method inside when, it will run every time you shake or every time you touch. We're going to try moving Daisy to the end only using when. All right, let's try it. We know that the first thing we want to do is we want to take this when command and we want to slide it into our program. It's similar to the repeat five in that it gives us this little cloud over here which suggests to us that we can put commands in that little cloud. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our instructions, we're going to read, and our goal is to get Daisy all the way to the end every time we shake or touch. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to shake. I'm going to touch instead. So I'm going to go up to this when, I'm going to click this arrow down, and I'm going to, I'm going to change that shake over to touch. And now all I need Daisy to do is just move, to the, to the, move forward every time I touch. So I'm going to take this move command and I'm going to slide it into my program, but I'm not going to put it here. I'm going to put it inside the when cloud. So this functionality means when there's a touch, move forward. I think it's going to be that simple. Let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to press play and now my program is running. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch underneath Daisy's feet. You can touch anywhere. I'm going to touch underneath Daisy's feet. Give her a touch, and she moves forward a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and touch again. Give it a touch under the feet, and she moves again. Try it. Give it a touch, and she moves. I'll do it again. Touch and move. It's getting predictable. I'll touch and move. I think we might just need one more time. Let's try. Touch and move. Oh, close. Looks like it needs one more touch and there it is we've completed the challenge we are still amazing coders so we win 
And now this opens up our ability to go to free play mode. So I'm not going to get too much into free play mode in this video, but I'll show you that you've got a lot more commands that you can play with. We've got the repeat five and the when. I'll show you that if you include the when and you have something like, let's see, grow and we'll change the when command to touch. So this is a little bit different. When I pr press play on this one, instead of Daisy walking when we touch, Daisy's going to grow. So I'll touch and Daisy grows. Touch and Daisy grows. Touch and she grows. And it keeps going like that. That gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can expect in free play mode. And what we'll do is we'll come up with a couple of exercises for you to do uh, when, you and when you try the app and you go into free play mode. So that concludes the video for now. I really appreciate you watching and check us out next time. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and we'll talk to you real soon.